Okay. No, Vicky! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 2022 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge Meetup. I am so excited. This, to, this year, we're all about superheroes because we all are superheroes. And before I move any further, I want to introduce a wonderful, beautiful woman, a friend of mine, um, who is going to be the ASL interpreter for our event, the beautiful Hope Simon. Thank you, Hope. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, this, this, again, it's, what is this, eight years going on now? I'm losing track of time. I'm losing memory too, but that goes with time. <laughs> um, before we st start the 2022 season, uh, we're going to show a little video, a recap of the 2021 uh, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. So here we go. So, comes as no surprise, 2020 was a rough year. The global pandemic took us all by storm. Production shut down, the entertainment industry paused, turned to technology to find new ways to tell stories. After a careful review, we were able to relaunch the Home Edition. These were documentary films, and we had 87 that were shot and produced from all over the world. I've become the lighting person, the camera person, the editor, and the actor. It's been really great. I knew I didn't have the best equipment, but I've got stories. I just really wanted to do a positive documentary about autism. I have so much to say, and I have to do it in five minutes. To be able to have the opportunity to create was just awesome. Three, two, one. Registration is officially open. Welcome to the 2021 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. The Film Challenge has led to countless opportunities for people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera. There's everything to gain, but there's nothing to lose. Just go for it, is what I always say. The abilities that we can show the industry, be it theater, be it modeling, on set. We have to keep going and we can grow. And that is the right attitude to have. Who's ready to start these awards? Tonight's award ceremony is being broadcast live. That's right, we're live, baby. Kabam, look at that. Every single one in the film challenge films are worth watching. It was just really meaningful to see an event that was catered directly to disabled people where they were given free reign to make exactly the kind of content they want to make and show what they can do. You guys are mold breakers. I can't wait to see what you all do next. You made us all laugh, you made us think, and you did mockumentary proud. We're making tremendous progress. Thank you all for sharing your films, for putting yourself out there and driving disability inclusion forward. Thank you, Nick and Easter Seals for this incredible opportunity. Thank you again. Now everybody, let's sit back and let's enjoy the fact that we're all here together and the fact that most of us still aren't wearing pants. I love this. I am like, every year I look forward to this. Uh, and uh, before I go any further, I do have to say uh, that I am wearing a blue shirt, long sleeve, uh, a blue vest with a, a superhero tie. That's what I consider it. And my, um, my Uncle Ben's ring. Um, so I want to now, um, the, the man of the hour, uh, uh, let me throw out some, some names of, of, of shows that you might have heard of. Boardwalk Empire, The Good Doctor, The Sopranos, Drop Dead Diva, Breaking Wind, uh, Aliens and Geeks, um, 
just a, a few credits of this amazing, wonderful, beautiful man. He's a comedian, uh, he's an actor, he's a producer. He is the founder and the director of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, Mr. Nick Novicki. Hello, thank you so much, David. And thank you to Performing Arts Studio West for allowing us to be here, giving us this platform. Uh, we have an amazing event today, in, including a screening of last year's winners. I'm going to tell you about this year's film challenge. And we have some judges that are with us here today, some special guest judges. You may have seen one of them in the chats, Mr. Danny Woodburn. And he asked, is David wearing pants today? And I got I to gotta say, I'm wearing pants today because uh, we're finally starting to come out of the pandemic. So there's no more excuses. We, I'm we not to... wearing pants. <laughs> He's not, though. He's not. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, and I, I know we actually have some new people here that, that are uh, not actually as familiar yet with the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And you've, you've learned about us through the Abilities Expo or through online, and you found out about this event. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Nick Novicki. As David said, I'm an actor, I'm a comedian, I'm a writer, producer, uh, I'm also a little person. And I learned early in my career that I had to be in charge of all aspects of my career, learning how to write, to produce, to create my own content. And ultimately, work led to work, and that led to a lot of job opportunities for me. And so nine and a half years ago, I looked around. I was like, why aren't more people with disabilities creating their own work? So I created the Disability Film Challenge, which is a film competition where you need to have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. And you make a film that doesn't have to be about disability in the storyline. It's just about including people with disabilities, making a film based on our assigned genre. Now, this year's genre, as, as David alluded, is superhero. And I'm going to get more, more into this year's genre and the prizes and all that information. But I just want to thank all of you. We have so many people that have been a part of the film challenge, that have helped us grow, that have really been a part of this movement to have more people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera. When we started year one, there was a couple films. In year two, there was more. And it just kept growing. And I partnered with Easter Seals, Southern California, the nation's largest disability services organization back in 2017. And to date, we've had hundreds of films, countless success stories, and together we are changing representation. So I have the great honor of introducing the founder of Performing Arts Studio West. And this is really one of my favorite events. Every year I look forward to doing a workshop. Usually it's, it's in person, but the last couple of years, uh, we've been able to continue to do this during the pandemic virtually. Uh, and that is thanks to the amazing support of David Zimmerman, of uh, Performing Arts Studio West, and all those great people that work at Performing Arts Studio West. Now, I am honored to introduce to you the founder of Performing Arts Studio West, John Pazis. John. Hey. Hey, can you see me and hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Well, good morning, everybody. What a pleasure to be here. And what, what a fabulous opportunity for us all to get together. And here I am in my car. And actually, my wife is coming into my car in one second here. I'm just starting to speak. Come on in, Megan. Um, there's my lovely wife, also works at Performing Arts Studio West. But we're here with Nick. We're live with everybody. And Hi. Nick just gave us a wonderful introduction and just... You know, we're just we're just so proud of you, Nick, and and what you have developed over the years, and and your 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 insight and your your acumen with regard to not only the business aspect of things, but all the work that you have done and all the opportunities that you have provided for people. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for for continuing to allow us to be part of this, and we're just absolutely thrilled as always, and so much looking forward. <laughs> so much looking forward to uh, to this year's uh, uh, films and what a wonderful uh, uh, genre that you have chosen this time with regard to superheroes or superhero because that can take on so many different meanings in today's society and uh, it, it's going to be an incredible year this year and we're really looking forward to it so thank you for having us 
thank you for being here. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for everybody that is here. And unfortunately, we got to kind of cut out a little bit because we're in, a, we're in a, a time crunch with commuting and stuff. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, judges. For, for being with us. Thank you, David, for, for you know helping make all these connections happen. And uh, let's have a great, great film challenge this year, you guys. Woo! Well, thank Ooh, you indeed. so much. Uh, you truly are so supportive. And I kind of like it that you're on the go right now. I feel like, you know, it's fun. <laughs> we're, we're in, in lo- car, we're lovely, we're Santa Mon- well, lovely Santa Monica heading back to the east side. And just ah, people, so. Nice. Nice. Well, thanks so much. And I can't wait to see you in person sometime soon. Oh, absolutely, man. We look forward to it. Yeah. Well, thanks. So for those of you that don't know, you know, I, you know, I know we alluded to what the film challenge is. It's making a film that has somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. Now, if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, that's going to walk you through how to register, how to get involved, because step one, you have to register. You have to register by April 4th. And then everybody that's registered from around the world will be emailed the assignment. And that's going to include props that have to be incorporated, themes, locations uh, to choose from, so that we know these films were done during the five days of April 5 to April 10. And again, this is superhero. So it's going to be a a, a really fun genre. But don't start filming yet, because we really want to make sure that you're doing it during these five days so that it's fair from everybody. And we're going to have our judges in a little bit talk about what they like to see, as well as some industry uh, guests that are going to talk about some advice, uh, you know, uh, of of ways that you can really help your productions. But real quick, I just want to tell you that this is the year that you want to take part in the film challenge. First and foremost, at the end of the competition, you are going to have your own film. You own that. You're going to be able to submit it to film festivals. You're going to be able to use it as an opportunity for you to get more work in front of and behind the camera. And if you're on here and you don't have a disability and you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't know anybody with a disability, so I I, I can't do this. Let me tell you what, one in four Americans has some form of disability. I guarantee you, if you post on your social media channel and say, I'm looking for somebody with a disability to be part of my team, you're going to get multiple responses. And within this group within this zoom there is so much talent within performing arts studio west so many great actors and there's so many great people with disabilities around the world that will be great in front of and behind the camera but this year if you take part in it the winners are going to get two thousand dollar grants provided by comcast nbc universal you're going to get dell computers adobe creative cloud imdb memberships and mentor meetings Plus, the winning films are going to screen at Academy Award qualifying festivals around the country. Now, I am going to show you a little promo. And then after this promo uh, that, that shows you about this year's film challenge, we're going to bring on our judges and some special guests to talk about this year's challenge. And they're going to give us some tips and advice from what they like to see. So let's see that promo. Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Let's tell our stories. Write a script and produce a short film with this year's genre, superhero. Win prizes. Increase your visibility. Expand your network. And attend our award ceremony. Open to filmmakers with and without disabilities who want to challenge how disabilities are viewed and inspire change. The challenge is from April 5th through April 10th. Register before April 4th at disabilityfilmchallenge.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, We are going to have some special guests join us here. And and as you can see, disabilityfilmchallenge.com. This is going to be where you're going to learn all that information. You're going to learn about the key dates because this year's film challenge dates are, as I said, April 5 to April 10. We have our awareness campaign which is happening where everyone is is putting all their films on our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel, and our Instagram channel. They're all going live. And at the exact same time on April 16th, which is a Saturday, also my daughter's first birthday. So a very uh, special day. But we are going to have an amazing campaign where people are going to get likes, views, and shares. And then our award ceremony is May 5th. 
Now, the judging of this is truly, truly uh, a very difficult process. Some of the judges say they like to get paid in bribes. I, I don't encourage it, but I, I can't stop it. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I don't know if any of you follow me on social media, but I posted a little clip last year of two uh, of uh, my good friends that are judges and just amazing advocates in the disability community. And they ripped me a good one about my hair. Uh, they One of them said, uh, Danny said it looked like I was wearing a toupee. And I wore a gold jacket, which many of you know I love wearing. And, you know, I haven't worn it since. So <laughs> without further ado, let me introduce two judges to start. And then we're going to bring on some industry professionals. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, you know him from Seinfeld, from 100 film and TV credits, including last week it was on Station 19, Mr. Danny Woodburn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick, you didn't get the note. I'm supposed to be introduced last, right? I don't know why you didn't get that note. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm, uh, I'm actually right. surprised I'm here this year. Um, uh, based on the thank you gift I received last year, uh, which was a Starbucks card, which meant, <laughs> hey, why don't you go out at the height of the pandemic and get yourself a cup of coffee on us? Uh, I, I felt boy. like you were just trying to like off me at that point. So I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful to be here, to be honest. Thanks for the uh, Starbucks uh, card. It remains unused to this day, just so you uh, know. Uh, well, you know what? I love coffee. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you want to <laughs> use it on, uh, you know, your friend. That we, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, where's the bribe happening? Where's the bribe? Ah, happening? All right. All right. So now. Uh, Nick, is that your place? Is that your apartment? This is my apartment right here. You know, I got some fun images oh, over here. You know? I don't know. I, last time I was there, I was just so used to seeing like newspapers from 1927 strewn about. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if you were still there. Yeah, you know, I still have some of that. You know, there's, there's some of that is there. <laughs> All right. And now let's bring on our other judge, uh, special guest joining to talk about behind the scenes, what they like to see. He's the president of Little People of America. You may have seen him in a film, which is actually up for this year's Academy Awards. It was just nominated, Nightmare Alley. Uh, he also uh, does a group breakfast with Danny and myself, and we have a we like to, you know, take over. Uh, it's our own nightmare. Group. It's our own nightmare. <laughs> it's our own nightmare, and we hang out in an alley. So, uh, without further ado, Mr. Mark Povinelli. There's my coffee. I used uh. my gift card. That's right. I got no problems going out there and forging my way to get my coffee. Wow. Oh, up, very good. Oh. Hey, bud. Oh, you Mark. found a brush since we last saw you. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, uh, a lot of you think this is very polished and we're all coming together. You know, there's always a scramble right before a virtual meetup event and we're trying to get everything ready and talk about a scramble. Mr. Povinelli's hair was uh, was really uh, pretty uh, pretty intense before, but now I mean he's yeah. really a hair model. Is, as well. he's, he is he's a wild man. He's <laughs> as I said earlier, it's it's the styling is not the the ghost of Elvis, but the corpse of Elvis. <laughs> well, luckily, you've given me all of your old combs, Danny, since you don't need them anymore. <laughs> oh! No, 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 no need, no need. This is <laughs> this is my comb right here. That's mm -hmm. it. I just I want to give hair, you. you can, I have you the hairline know. of a cruise ship captain. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna requote what Danny said last year about my hair. He said it looks like I'm wearing his toupee, uh, and you can actually see him on my Instagram at Nick Novick. And make sure you follow Danny and Mark and, and all of our winners that are gonna come on later. We're gonna see those winning films. Uh, so before we yep. bring on two other, you, uh, you made a comment, Nick. Shut up. You made a comment. <laughs> That this all just sort of comes together last minute, and it doesn't look like it. Trust me, it looks like it's coming together last minute. Just so you know, like Nick. Just Nick is like Nick is Nick has this amazing power to schmooze. I I watch him come into a room and just sort of blow through. And I'm in Palm Springs right now. We have these little mosquitoes called no seams, so they sting you, and then they're gone. And you're like, what the hell was that? That's Nick. That's Nick in a nutshell. He's a no seam. <laughs> You know, I uh, if, if only you didn't at, have to see him. That's the problem, though, Danny. You just you see he's right there always. 
Hey! No. You know, I, <laughs> that's it. I'll tell you that's what. the move. That's the Nick Novicki. That's the shit. He should have his own dance, I think. Everybody do the Nick <laughs> Novicki. Hey! hey! Let me tell you what, though. Uh, there is a real blessing. When you got three little people, we are able to make mosquito jokes more than anybody else in this room against each other. So that is a benefit. Uh, and that is a superpower that we have. So, uh, in all no honesty, segue. that that superpower not being comedy at this moment, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when in doubt, let's just laugh and figure out what we're saying next. <laughs> That's the, Nick, all right. Uh, Nick, anyways. Nick's whole philosophy around his stand up. If <laughs> I keep laughing, it philosophy. doesn't matter that other people are silent. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, that, that's what I go for. I I feel like when everybody doesn't laugh, that's when I make my statement. Yeah. Uh, speaking of... <laughs> speaking it's a great of, lecture. It's a great lecture you're giving. Speaking of statements, you guys have said in the past, uh, in all honesty, and, and, and I can't thank you enough uh, for, for being right. film challenge judges uh, all these years, for everything you do to, to honestly... Uh, really kind of further disability inclusion. You're both unbelievable advocates uh, in, and I appreciate you on, on multiple levels, uh, aside from being good friends that are never afraid to roast me. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> and I, I, I encourage it, but, 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 but in, in all honesty, you've been judges for, for now, this, this is the ninth year, you know, uh, actually Mark made a film year one. So uh, so you have a couple different points of view here. Well, and a Can certain you... judge didn't pick me the winner. Oh, mm. well, well, mm. you know, let, let's talk to that certain I'm judge. I'm sorry, how did that information get to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, so well, can you talk through a little bit what you like to see in a film? And, and, and Danny, you've been very vocal about saying that, that you don't want to see people giving us a lesson can, can you talk about what you like to see in a film what what is kind of crossed I, the line for you i like to see i just like to see good storytelling you know um uh i i everybody has a story about themselves um but you know when when you tell the story about yourself it's hard to be objective uh and it can you know, as, uh, I think in, in this community, a lot of times it can come off a little preachy about disability. And and I just want to see a good story. It doesn't have to be about disability. I think, you know, uh, the one thing I re remember from my communications degree, uh, and Nick can attest because we went to the same college, um, Marshall McLuhan, a communications philosopher, said the medium is the message. And, and what that means to me in this community is that we as performers or artists in this realm are the actual message. We don't have to come at it with a hammer and a chisel and carve it all out uh, and say, this is the whole story of disability. I just think you just tell great stories. I want to see great superhero stories. It doesn't necessarily have to be about your particular disability in that sense, because you're already on the screen and you're conveying that story just through your presence. So that's what I mean by the medium is the message. And oh, uh, and you had said, Nick, about thanking me. And I figured out a way to thank both me and Mark. Um, one of the props should be a canceled check made out to Danny Woodburn or Mark Povinelli for $100. And that should be in the, so <laughs> I'm just saying, that's one of the props. I'm just putting it out there that you could select. Right, Mark? That's, that's a good. good that's idea. awesome. And then, Mark, we, I want to hear from you about your, your uh, point of view. And then right after that, uh, we're going to have uh, David Zimmerman talk about casting as well as an editor talking about tips and advice, uh, you know, behind the camera with post-production. So, so Mark, you know, you, you made a, f a film year one, you've been judging since, what do you like to see? Uh, how could people style their hair like yours? You know, what, give us anything here. I, I'd like to see five minutes yeah. of someone just playing with their hair. That would, that would, that would be in <laughs> That's, uh, that's genius. That's very Andy Warhol right there. Just and I think uh, Mark uses instead of a comb, he just uses a pillow. He just rubs a pillow on the side of his head. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think for me, what I get most excited about is it, building on what Danny said is that um, we all, you know, don't worry so much about what you think we want to see. You you want to you want to tell the story that's unique to you. You want to tell find find what is. Uh, um, 
that you're passionate about, find what makes you different from everybody else. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be something obvious. And, and really highlight that. Highlight what it is that you've been wanting to say and, 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 and worry about getting that message across that makes you unique. Um, the more kind of creative and inventive and, and stories that, you know, we, we've now, Danny and I have seen hundreds of films, to be honest, which is awesome. It's so cool. So, you know, we want to see the film we haven't seen yet. So um, don't be afraid mm. of taking risks and don't be afraid of just thinking outside the box and making something crazy and far out because oftentimes those are the ones that are going to catch our eye. Yeah, some of the, some of the winners, um, uh, like Marilee Talkington, who comes in fairly often, and I, I, I'm always interested in her film. She, she's done a couple now where it's just been her, you know, playing multiple roles or just her sort of emoting, uh, you know, in one location. So, you know, you don't have to get into the whole complexity of, you know, where are we going to shoot this or how are we going to do this or how are we going to do that? Sometimes the simplest thing can be the most impactful. That's that's great advice. And and speaking of that, too, uh, you know, let's bring on Matt Bauer uh, talking about post-production, because I think one thing that I've noticed and I know from my own career is that sometimes we want to shoot so much. And David Zimmerman, let's let's have you on here too. We want to shoot so much in terms of editing, and you know this has to be done in five days. So if you shoot too much content, it is impossible for you to edit it at all. So you know what what Danny said is you know sometimes less is more, and that that may be the better way for you to be thinking about. You want to make sure that you you're finishing your film. How's it going, Matt? Hey, how David? you guys doing? Good, good. So so Matt. You know, I know we, we're, we're limited in our time because we're about to see the winning films and then Danny and Mark are going to talk to those winners after. So of do you course. have any kind of uh, quick advice uh, for editing or, or uh, you know, resources that also you may be able to share in the chat as well? Of after? course. Uh, well, off the top of my head, real quick tips. Very helpful. I wish, honestly, I knew these getting into the, the, in, the editing aspect of it all. Uh, beforehand is like the first thing is figure out who's shooting this thing if you if you're not shooting it and editing it if you're just editing it then try to get in touch with uh, anyone who is operating the camera as well as the sound have a discussion about like how you're going to get all those files because that could be such a hair ripping moment when you realize oh the shooting's done and you're like oh time to edit and you don't even know how you're getting the clips what type of clips they are, et cetera. So always keep an ongoing conversation with uh, the production side of things, preferably beforehand as well as during the shoot. Um, another big thing that I, I love to do is um, pretty much when you do, depending on your program, of course, I, I prefer something like Adobe Premiere, which you can get a free trial for. So you could sign up for that before the film race, get acquainted with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, as far as the process goes, it's great to just kind of throw all that footage onto one timeline, a big old mess of things. You comb through it. Sometimes it, even ask a director or someone on set to give you uh, what their favorite moments are, their selects, or that moment where the actor, uh, uh, I don't know, smacked their lips the way they did or, or blinked a certain way, gave a 10-yard stare, or, or a great performance. Um, if they give you those feedback, and even if you ask for that beforehand, that'll make this process of finding those selects, those golden moments, all the more work, uh, all the more easier to navigate through. Because once you have those selects, that's when you're essentially starting to edit. And going right into the edit, of course, it's always depending on time. And you know, if uh, if you do have enough time coming into it as an editor, you you want to at least go through the process so that you're not just uh, decisive, but also you have uh, peace of mind, uh, which during a film race is a hard thing to find. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, and, and to that said, when you're going to make your edit, try to also refrain from actually watching your edit until you've actually like lined it all out, because you could waste a lot of time really admiring how well you put that one scene together. I've been there. And then before you know it, it's already midnight and you're like, oh man, I still got 19 more scenes to cut. So if you could withhold your, uh, you know, with, withstand from 
giving into that urge to watch it all until it's at least all one first cut, that'll save you time. And that'll also give you some time down the road when you refine it to stylize it a bit, you know, give it that, that magic touch because this is going to be the last uh, chance you're going to get, along with the director watching it with you. This is going to essentially be the last time before this, this, this art piece or this comedy <laughs> is going to be completed you know yes. um and then the world sees it wow. um and then i suppose the, the last thing it's not it's not a very specific resource i'm sure everybody has heard of it um a, a, as an editor e- even to this day whenever i'm in a bind i always go online and i'll google how do i solve this problem how do i get around this or there's a technical issue uh i'll google something um i'll even youtube something um youtube is even uh i prefer that over google because it'll actually show you on the screen the problem that you're having as well as how to fix it and then you'll be like great i never would have figured that out otherwise um but also don't be afraid to ask people of course it's just uh you have a whole world full of knowledge at your fingertips so don't be afraid to uh research and then if you still can't figure it out ask around and um and yeah, I mean, that, I would say that those are the tips for the, that, well, that I thought of. You know, that first of all, that is a lot of helpful information. And I'm, yeah, I'm that's asking, like that's like 48 hours worth of tips. So I think, you know, <laughs> the challenge I, is over at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I do accept that. It's my master I, class for you. I accept Bitcoin. <laughs> I, uh, there you go. There you go. Well, hey, let's, uh, I accept Bitcoin too. So, uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, Thank you, Matt. And I know you've given a lot of helpful info. And honestly, when you have questions, these technical questions about your projects and you send them to me and I respond, many times this is Matt also weighing in on the back end. And he's been wildly helpful. And talking about being wildly helpful and Matt, if you have any tips or helpful uh, YouTube links or anything else, feel free to share those in the chat. Sure. But, but, But talking about helpful, before we uh, have a special guest that's going to introduce our our winners right from Performing Arts Studio West. The the man, the myth, the Mister Helpful, the casting director, the maestro. That is David Zimmerman. Yay! Oh my you, God! You're wow. also a professional casting director, and people reach out all the time. What if somebody's like tuning in? Where where can people find talent? And can you talk about, you know, finding talent within Performing Arts Studio West and your oh, network and meet the best? gosh, there's so much talent here at Performing Arts Studio West. I mean, we, we, we I mean, six of our uh, wonderful performers just got cast in a, uh, a film that's shooting this Friday. Um, and, and I mean, we have over a hundred performers uh, here to be cast in. And the, the great thing about the, uh, the, the disability film challenge uh, is, and, and we hear all oh, the disability of films. This is for all directors, all producers, all actors to come together to create. Um, and for me, it's, you know, an extended family. Um, so, uh, you know, performing arts, but you, you have born to act players. You have inclusion films. You have the whole internet. <laughs> you, you know, you have, I mean, any actor, it's great to bring all actors together. I know that last year, even Charlene Tilton said, hey, I'd love to do a, 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 a film. So, you know, you have people of all, all backgrounds and levels coming together to create. Um, and they can reach out, you know, Diana Elizabeth Jordan, um, for those performing arts, uh, Studio West uh, actors and performers can connect with her and say, hey, I want to be a part of something if it's possible. And anybody uh, out there listening to this who, who says, hey, do you have somebody could, who possibly fits this role? Feel free to contact me. Um, at the same time, you can go out and 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 research yourself uh, because they're right. You know, <laughs> LA, this this world is full of creative and amazing people. Well, thank you so much, David. Um, y- you also brought up Diana Elizabeth Jordan, and uh, she is our own 
Diane Elizabeth Jordan, and I say our own because uh, she is just such an ally. Uh, she's won Best Actor uh, for the Film Challenge. She's been nominated for Best Director, and she also teaches at Performing Arts Studio West. And we have a clip of her uh, introducing our, our winning films. And then we're going to bring on uh, Danny and, and Mark back to talk to our winners. We may actually bring them on to talk before the, the films play, because as always, we may be running out of time <laughs> within our, our hour here. And so uh, let's first bring on uh, Diana Elizabeth Jordan. Hello everyone, it's Diana Elizabeth Jordan and I realized I, before I left this video, I wanted to share a brief visual description of myself. I am a black disabled woman, I'm wearing a blue dress, I'm standing against the Eat to See a Disability Film Challenge logo, which is the word Eat to See a Disability Film Challenge surrounded by two orange laurels. Hello everyone, I'm Diana Elizabeth Jordan, actor, director, and producer. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there today. I want to start this with a quote. Don't be afraid of the space between your dreams and reality. You can dream it you can do it. That quote is from Belva Davis, the first African-American television journalist on the West Coast. In 2014, my friend and our friend Nitna Vicky had a dream to create opportunities for disabled talent behind and in front of the camera. And so he launched what is now known as the ECC of Disability Film Challenge. And because he chose to manifest his dreams, it has created opportunities for countless actors and filmmakers in the following years to manifest their dreams. And now you have an opportunity to be an actor if you're a filmmaker to manifest and make your dream come true by signing up for the, for the 2022 Eat the Seals Disability Film Challenge. Will it be easy? No. Will there be challenges? Yes. Will there be moments of frustration? Probably. But will the journey be worth it? I believe with all my heart that it will. And maybe you're saying to yourself, I don't know if I can make a film. I have never made a film before. Well, I'm too naked and talk to you about what you need to do and all you need. And all I'm going to say is, the truth is, you never know if you try. And I believe you can guarantee a no by not trying or take, face your fears, fill your fears, take a deep breath. And do it anyway. Do it if you're scared. Do it if you don't know if you can. Just take that action and do it. Take an opportunity to manifest a dream you've had or to continue to develop your skills as a filmmaker, as a writer, as an actor. Nick has created this amazing platform for artists with disabilities to do that and celebrate the diversity and intersectionality of our community. And now I'm proud to introduce four filmmakers who last year took an opportunity to manifest their dreams. Um, I first want to mention Danny Bowman. She is not, we are not going to see her film, but she, um, I still want to do knowledge to win as best editor last year for her film Home, Home Office. And now for the film we're going to see today. Winner of best film, Dwarf Psychosis, Emily um, Pascal and Pandra Muller. Best actor, Natalie Trebone, for the film 
Lene Tubam, and Beth Awareness Campaign, Anna Packman for the film Social Fitness. Enjoy the film, and I cannot wait to see what each of you manifest for the e Disability Film Challenge 2022. Wow. Thank you so much, Diana Elizabeth Jordan. It felt like she was here with us, and uh, you know she always she always has that that energy and that enthusiasm and that talent that brings us all in together. Uh, we are going to see the winning films. Um, as I said, you know we've had so many great tips and advice and things to say, and so we're we're headed a little closer towards uh, the end, the, the twelve o'clock stop time. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring oh, the, the winners the, the winners on first to talk. And so Danny and Mark will, will uh, come back as judges to ask, ask them questions, let everybody introduce themselves. Um, but we're going to bring on Natalie Travone from Nene to Bomb. We're going to bring on Anna Packman from New York City. And that is the social fitness uh, film that won the best awareness campaign. We are also going to bring on Emily Pascal. Um, from dorphopsychosis. And, and, you know, in terms of resources too, for when you're casting, you know, again, if you're looking for talent and you're looking for those great actors with disabilities, one last time, a plug, Performing Arts Studio West, David Zimmerman, as well as Danny Woodburn and the ADA lead on, um, you know, the great work that, he, that he's doing um, and has done for years with the sag after Performers with Disabilities Committee, uh, so the talent is out there and, and don't let, ever let that be a reason for you to not make your film. So uh, Danny and Mark, do you have any, uh, you know, do you want questions for, for our winners? And then we're going to see those films after. Uh, thank you all so much. I'll start if that's okay. I just, a general question for everybody is, um, I think it would be beneficial for the listeners, viewers, observers today to um, hear a little bit about your process of getting through those, those 48 hours and getting it done. Hey, this is Anna, I can start. Um, just a quick visual description. I am a very pale woman with curly uh, brown hair and a fluffy pink sweater. And um, so uh, my film, Social Fitness, we um, produced it completely virtually. So all of the actors, and there were 10 actors in the film, did self-tapes from home. Um, we had an editor um, who edited everything remotely, actually two editors. And um, it's funny because most, um, aside from, you know, me knowing most of the people on the project before, um, most people had never even met um, in person before working on this film together. Uh, hey, Emily, I think you're on mute. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if Anna was done because I'm here and hiding in the car. Yeah, I think um, you're in second I am gear. Emily, I'm a white woman with, <laughs> uh, is, with brown hair, uh, tan, beanie, and glasses. Um, when it comes to process, I think this year we did things a little differently for dwarfopsychosis. Um, it was the first year that Pancho and I uh, worked with other people, and we had a wonderful couple, um, uh, Maria and Steven, who we worked with, and Stephen and Poncho, really, there was no script. Um, there was an outline of beats and where we wanted the story to go, but they spent a lot of time the first day, day and a half, creating the characters, the world, the history, so that then once we got shooting, we could just kind of play. Um, and we didn't try to edit in our heads while we were going along, we sort of just let it happen. And then Pancho um, and Maria worked to edit the story together. Cause I think we captured a lot of things we knew we wouldn't have if we had planned a lot of it. So that was great. Um, I'm African American, I have short hair and I'm wearing a black shirt and um, our process was pretty similar to Emily and Poncho's. We didn't have like a script. We had an outline of points that we wanted to hit, but it was literally just me sitting down and like 
being goofy and like just having fun with it. And Marie was very open to that. Like she just wanted us to have a good time. And our film is fun in the way that like we made up all those raps and they're kind of silly anyways. So it was just like a fun time. Like we really had the mindset of let's just make something fun and whatever comes out of it comes out of it. And I, I have a question for you all. This is Mark. Um, what was the, what what did you find to be the biggest unexpected challenge and how did you go about solving that problem through the course of the weekend um i'm trying to think uh i think our biggest challenge was keeping my animals from barking i think that was really it um we didn't have a lot of challenges because we went into it just with no expectations and just to have fun, but shooting at our house and we have four cats and three dogs. Um, we decided just let them run through the scenes and let them make noise and we'll just work with it, you know, as it goes along instead of controlling the situation um, if we had had more time. Yeah, this is Natalie. I don't think we had any major challenges. Uh, Marie can probably speak more to that maybe just trying to get everything edited on time. But as far as actual filming day, it ran pretty smoothly. Yeah, and this is Anna. So we we also didn't have any major challenges that I can remember. I think the biggest challenge and the biggest learning is if you have very white people, don't let them stand in front of a white wall um, when filming if you're trying <laughs> to do a green screen effect. Um, that was something we learned. So that there was one scene we definitely had to reshoot um, because um, someone on the team did that. And I think that's kind of the, that was the challenge too. And you know, it's just like kudos to the amazing editors who worked on this film because you know, as you can imagine, getting ten people's worth of footage and then editing that in the time that we were given um, is um, definitely a superhero achievement. Um, and the one recommendation I have to people from my team says. My superpower is the power of the spreadsheet. So I think just being very organized helps. <laughs> what, um, what, uh, I'm just curious, like from a technical standpoint, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are like worried how, what do I shoot this on? What do I use? You know, what do I use for sound? So can you just sort of relay a little bit about your tech? Like, you know, did you do it on an iPhone? Did you have a camera and a separate sound uh, system to capture this? audio how did you do that for us um we actually just used our iphones um i did have some road go lavaliers but we ended up not even using them and we did lock out that uh our living room has really good natural lighting so we didn't even need to do a lot when it came to lighting um but when we we just shot a proof of concept of dwarf psychosis and we made the decision to shoot it on the brand new iphones um we used the lobs and uh, a boom mic but did it all through our phones so we could easily do pickups and be in control of that uh but I, the technology makes it so you can just do anything yourself there's no reason not to just write something and shoot it at this point Yeah, for us, it was a mix um, because the actors all did self tapes. It just depended on, you know, who felt comfortable with what equipment. Most of it was shot on various phones. Um, I think Maysoon has like a 1990s um, point and shoot camera she shot it on for the looks of it. <laughs> but, um, you know, again, our editors made it all work. Yeah, I was lucky that uh, Marie is a line producer, so she brought in all her friends. So we had like an actual cinematographer on the set with oh, us. Wow. Um, but yeah, so we just got really lucky. They were able to um, work that day. He actually just came from a music video and like was able to just work with us on Nene Two Bombs. So we just kind of lucked out with that. Wow. And I'm, I'm curious to know what sort of, uh, what was the most helpful uh, thing that you all did uh, pre-shooting day? Like what, what sort of prep did you go into um, so that when April 5th comes for these contestants that they're ready to go? What was the most helpful piece? Yeah, I can take that first, Susanna. Um, definitely spreadsheet, um, you know, just organizing kind of, you know, who would be doing what, um, timing out. 
the full production schedule in advance uh, and also having, you know, meetings just, you know, especially because um, we hadn't all met each other um, just to kind of see what the chemistry was between people um, to help with the casting process. Um, and actually we did, um, unlike the other two, we did have um, a pretty kind of um, set script. Um, so we did, we had a writer's room process for that once April, April 5th or whatever date it was last year, rolled around. Oh, well, Marie and I kind of just uh, brainstormed together over the phone um, and just kind of tried to talk about like what we wanted to do. We had a whole different idea at first, but then when she told me that she had a recording studio in her house because her, her husband is an audio engineer, that just kind of changed the game. <laughs> like, I love music. And so I brought in my friend, Jeremy, who's also blind and he produces. And that first day that it started, Jeremy and I got together and just kind of went crazy with playing with different lyrics and music and like was cracking up my whole family. They were like, what is this for? We're like, you're wait and see, like we got something here. Um, so it was, it was a lot of brainstorming and just kind of going with the flow, I think. Um, but it, we all really gelled together. Like I actually hadn't met Marie in person before then, but it just kind of came together in a way that we were able just to be like, okay, let's have, have fun. And I think because we had that mindset of having fun, everything just kind of fell in place. Ours was similar. I would say that we, um, we really just focused on like the, the guys went and started doing their character work. Um, and, and Maria and I were more the focus of like kind of a shot list, but mostly the goals of the story so that we can reach those things. The goal, we really, the focus was let's create this as if it was a cold opening for a TV show, which gave us the mindset of, okay, beginning, middle and end. Also like, we're gonna end with this birthday party, this reveal, what beats do we need to get to to get to that um, so that they have the freedom to play, but we can kind of give a little bit of direction. Well, that is awesome. Now, I, I want to let you all know that you can see all of these winning films, as well as all of our past challenges. If you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com, you hit the challenge tab. Previous challenges is going to show you what some of those past assignments looked like. And you're going to be able to see our past winning films, including these unbelievable films, which the three of you have screened at festivals all over the world now at this point, um, as well as Danny Bowman, uh, who won Best Editor, who's not with us today. Uh, in, in, a, in a moment, we are going to actually share all three of these winning films. And so we're going to actually have them on screen. So you're going to be able to watch them right here with captions built in. Uh, typically, we would have <laughs> these films play before we do our Q&A so that you're able to kind of see the films and then hear from everybody. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we're, we're good talkers. You know, Danny, Mark, I got I to gotta take some of the blame myself. I probably, uh, I go a little long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Danny and Mark are looking at me like, wait a minute, did, did Nick go over his time? Uh, yeah, I did. And I apologize. I take that. Uh, I take that. But but uh, it was actually the first time we've ever done this where we've gotten a chance to, to hear from everybody before we see the films. And so I think that this is actually gonna show us a, a whole new lens of, of uh, you know, what these amazing talents uh, went through when they made their film and how you heard from them and you're gonna be able to see more of them. I wanna encourage you all to follow these talented people on social media, Natalie Trevone, Anna Pacman. Emily Pascal, um, Pancho Moeller, as well as these amazing judges, Danny Woodburn, Mark Povinelli, uh, all their social media channels. Danny also uh, plugged his ADA lead on, which is a great uh, resource for you to, to find your talent and to get involved with, with programs they do, as well as I, I encourage you all to, to support Performing Arts Studio West. They put on great plays workshops, events, and they've been doing it for years and they continue to do it. So uh, go on their website and see their events calendar. 
Uh, also, make sure to check out all the great workshops that David Zimmerman and Meet the Biz does throughout the year to truly uh, champion people with disabilities. So I, I put the website to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. If anybody has questions, you can ask those in the chat. I'm going to stay on because we're about to screen these three winning films and we're going to go full screen. So I want to give a big uh, thank you and a shout out and love to Hope to uh, for interpreting to David Zimmerman to uh, meet the biz to all this family that is the disability community that that does things together that helps us let's all throw those hands up in the air I love you all I appreciate you I'm staying on if you have questions uh, some of our winners may be able to stay on some can't um, that, but I'll be able to relay any questions you have for them or for anybody else so we can talk through the chat and also you can email me and reach out anytime. So thank you so much to our judges, to our special guests and to Performing Arts Studio West for being such an amazing ally in disability inclusion. I can't wait to see all your amazing superhero films, but first let's watch those winners from 2021. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. Hey, what's up? We're the Bianco brothers. We're fraternal twins. Yep. I'm Peter. I'm Pat. And uh, I know we're fraternal, but it's really hard to tell us apart. Ah, we're not identical. Really. But uh, yeah, and uh, we love to do everything together, travel, date, and we happen to be little people. Really proud of that. So Yeah. But yeah, traveling, dating. Why uh, don't you go get those pictures, buddy? Oh, from the last trip? Yeah. Is that Remember? okay? Where are they? Over yeah, the Grandma counter? sends us everywhere. Where are they? Over on the counter? Yeah, right? go get them okay. on the counter. Yeah, so Grandma sends us anyways. He's not a little person. He thinks he is. I can't reach him. Use the stool. Oh, oh dude, don't show that one, man. Oh, this is fun. We went <laughs> to the Bahamas. We got really time. drunk. That yeah. was fun. That was a really yeah. good time. This is us when we went to Disney World. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we wear these hats so we can spot each other in large crowds. It makes mm -hmm. it a lot easier. This yeah. was a good trip, but they, they wouldn't let us go on Splash Mountain. <laughs> they let you go. Show them the Grand Canyon. Okay. This is epic. How epic is that pic? Right? Yeah. Really great. Is, we're and staring can off you tell the, the difference from behind? No. no I can't. Well, so what can't. would you say uh, are some of your biggest differences? I'll let him answer this one. Oh, uh, well, he's, tattoos, right? Yeah. I, I'm terrified of needles, but he's, he's a wuss. Pat's a tougher guy than I am. Um, oh, uh, I always have to have socks on. Even if it's so hot, Pat never wears socks. This is, uh, this is a toy from when we were kids that I hold, I hold on to everything. Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm not really sure why you guys are here today. Um, I'm not sure if it's to document, you know, little people, uh, but it's been really hard. Uh, because I love my brother so much and I look up to him, even though he's only two minutes older. Um, he's the tough one. You know, we, we get made fun of a lot and people know we're different, so they like call it out. But I just I hope he knows how much I love him and how much I look up to him. And I've always wanted to be like him. So right about now, it's grandma's bathing hour. It's Pete's job. <laughs> yeah, we live with our grandma. Anyways, the real reason I had you guys come here today is because today is the day that I'm going to reveal the truth to my brother. I told myself, no matter where we are in life, that on our 40th birthday, I'm going to tell him the truth. I mean, it's, he's been in denial all these years. It's, it's gotten to be a little too much. It's, it's embarrassing. You know you don't need a stool, right? <laughs> Shut up, bro. You, you don't need a stool. <laughs> Maybe it's because we share the same dwarf chain. I have no idea. But I just want him to be normal. Oh. And if you listen really carefully, you can hear him singing Grandma her favorite song. She loves Pitbull. Oh, thanks, man. I got you a gift. Dude, you said we weren't doing gifts I this know, year. I just open it. Come on, man. Open it. It's just a gift certificate to the Wiz, because nobody beats no, the Wiz. No, just open it. You're gonna, you're gonna love it. Hmm. What is this? P 
Peter Bianco, you are not a little person. Doctor. What is this? Is this like a joke or something? What? Where's, Just let where'd... that sink in. Wait, doctor? Did you do... This is your hand... Did you do this? Yes, I did. Why? Because you need to realize the truth, brother. Listen, we're twin brothers, and I love you to death more than anything. But you are not a little person, all right? Don't say that. No, you're not a little person. Don't say that, man. I'm not. Listen, I'm just being honest with you. I know I'm being honest with you. Look, look at my arms. Look at my arms. Look at your arms. Look at your legs. Dude, we're talking about we're brothers. I'm a little person. Listen, it's okay. It's not about what's out here. It's about what's in there. And you're going to be accepted no matter what. I will? Yeah. So I am a little person. <laughs> this is just a joke. If you lived a hundred years, you'd be singing the same old tune. That life can be a monster, but there's still something wrong with you. Hey bro, did you see the three-stepper stool? I want to put the dishes away and I can't reach the top. Chardonnay Royal Banks is easily the biggest star of her generation. Over 1 million followers on social media, a fashion icon with endorsements for Prada, Gucci, and Versace, sold out shows at arenas, and three platinum records. She's just getting started. So who is this young starlet currently being referred to as the princess of hip hop? She's none other than Nay Nay Two Bomb. All y'all love and support. I'm so excited. Thank you for going out and copping that. That's my man. And I want to give y'all a little sneak peek of my new song coming up. So stay tuned. Uno, dos, tres. Bad shoes in a brand name dress. Always first, never play second best. No sight, but I never look a mess. She contributes her success to her prolific lyrics and beats that she writes all on her own. Get it, girl? Shake it to the left. Gonna shake it to the right. All the girls on the floor, little booties, unite. Little booties are in, don't listen to what they say. You know we gotta speak out or else they'll never be changed. And uh, long hair, little butt, cute face. Soft skin so sweet you wanna taste. As you can see, Nay Nay is a true legend in the making. But how did the princess of hip hop come to be this huge star? And when did she know that her life was about to change forever? Yeah, so the way I got into hip hop is that me and my best friend Kina decided to start a hip hop group called the Pop Off Girls. And we really started it because it's like, if you disrespect us, you can get pop. And so Kina basically got a full scholarship to Spellman Go Girl and I ended up going solo and I got invited to this like industry party and they had like this open mic thing going on and they was like get on stage so I was like okay I got this I got this so I got up on stage and just went crazy I was just flowing okay and then TDE ended up hitting me up later like come through the studio and I mean like the rest is history I'm about Rick Ross since I go off all these dudes is lame you know they all talk all talk I threw it back, he couldn't catch it. I'm about to learn him this is lesson. And to know me is a blessing. Baddest in the room, walk in, no question. And I'm blind and fine. Got my white cane on their next. They couldn't touch me if they tried. That's my man, girl, that's me. That's my man, like what you mean? That's my man, girl, that's me. That's my man, like what you mean? I mean, that wig is synthetic. I mean, you look so pathetic. Said what I said, don't regret it. You wanna fight, then let's get it. Yo, that's the vibe right there. Yeah, so just growing up as a woman of color, you know, especially in the black and Latino community, we tend to be a little bit curvier, you know? So my little cousins and best friends was waking up like, surprise, shawty! And they had like a little extra in the back. And then I was waking up and was like, well, where is mine? Like, I didn't see one. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I can get some butt implants or some butt shots. But I was like, no, I'm not about to subscribe to society's toxic standards. Like, 
So I started like these support groups and these rallies to empower women to fight against what they tell us is beautiful. Like, no, you don't have to do that because y'all gonna get this little booty and y'all gonna like it. Be you, be loud, and be proud because they can't hold us back, okay? The sky is the limit for this young star and we can't wait to see what she does next. Yes, go off, sis. Good evening. I'm Harriet Hattington. Tonight we go behind the scenes of a new type of fitness trend. The fitness it takes to socialize with other humans. Our new Discoveries correspondent Daphne Diaz brings us more on this story. I'm going to take you inside a special class that's helping local residents adjust to life after the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. So class, We've already talked about the sourdough thing. It says BYOB on that sign right there. What do you mean I can't bring my own bread? I want to talk to the manager. How to navigate without social distancing arrows. And proper office etiquette. <gasps> now, on to today's lesson, meeting new people. Let's just say I found it very easy to adjust to the new normal. But some people, they struggle. With everything being on Zoom, it's all business up top and easy breezy down below. Cat pants. Your cat is not your pants. Put some bottoms on your bottom, Jen. One leg at a time. Do you feel that your approach may be a little harsh it is time for us to rip the band-aid of comfort off the hairy back of complacency now we're gonna practice greetings are you a good teacher jen i am not your pet moving on olivia go ahead and shake karen's hand i'm sorry i can't i haven't touched anyone in a year mimi means well and knows what's important to me but I don't have to touch anyone to get pregnant. I got my baby in the sperm piggy bank right here. Last week I gave you a homework assignment. Would anyone like to share? I remember to unmute myself. You can just talk. We aren't on Zoom. I do everything on Zoom. I got married on Zoom. We had a Zoom wedding. Do you, Andy, take Divya? to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold. I do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> At least I think I did. Has anyone actually done this week's assignment? All you had to do was meet one real person in real life. I already did. Oh, thank our Lord and Savior, Dolly Parton. How'd it go? So should we? We're both vaccinated. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Oh, uh, what? It's just your face. It's just, you know, the mystery's gone. So let me get this straight. This was your first date. No, we've been social distance dating for six months. Am I a trained therapist? No. Did I flunk out of the police academy? Maybe. But there's no question. My approach works. What a marvelous report. Such bravery it takes to as much as utter a breath in the presence of another. This class is such an inspiration. What about you? How did you readjust? <laughs> I really... I've really never liked people anyway.
We'll be signing on out. Thank you again, Chris. Oh my God, the technical wizard. And Thank everybody you, Chris, David. And Thank Nick you, Nick. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.